we're actually sitting at less deaths than we ever have. Yeah, but nobody's dying from the flu. No, there has no. There's not one. Every year, thirty thousand people die in, during flu season. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, nope, they're not dying. No. Everyone's dying from COVID. I, keep, yeah! <laughs> oh, you preaching to the choir, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> what, did, what did we do? How do we organize people? Who do we get to be on our side? Like, we need like a celebrity. See, and and, and this this is what I what I struggle with because I I feel like you know. <sighs> I feel like I'm I'm thinking and processing and speaking very logically and very rationally and very critically. And I, but there are people that I have, and I'm going to say, unfortunately, uh, up until this point, considered logical, rational people that have lost their minds to the COVID stuff, your propaganda. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm, I'm really rational and logical and like I, I don't just you know, shut down in the face of somebody else's perspective. I do consider it whether I initially agree with it or not and so on and so forth. But I go, man, how, <laughs> how, 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 you can how do this, do, man. You can do this. How do you organize that? I mean, like, how, how do you, is it Ariana Grande? I think it is. Or Billie <laughs> Eilish. We could get Billie Eilish on our side. Everyone would believe it. <laughs> oh man maybe both of them can we have like a concert like i do a live aid thing but it's all like a covid oh, God, aid by people against hilarious get like billy eilish and ariana grande and somebody i like i don't know um we gotta get <laughs> i'll leave it we'll get sarah mclaughlin in there <laughs> why not oh god oh god please we no. get a bunch of injured puppies beside Just her which get is Celine Dion next what the hell that would help <laughs> that's the only thing that gets to people more than covid right would be puppies if yeah. I just got a bunch of puppies and Billie Eilish to tell them. And then we can also throw a kid or two dressed in tattered clothes up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, this is perfect. <laughs> that is, does, that's dark. <laughs> does Bob Geldof still do stuff like that? <laughs> I, I, probably. I'm pretty sure he's all over there. Bono? Can we call Bono? Where the hell has Bono been? <laughs> yeah, you have all this shut. stuff that that's needs to be. Yeah. Thing. Bono has six billion dollars. He's been somewhere very happy and healthy. That's where he's been. <laughs> oh my God. That's what I can't stand about the COVID thing. All these celebrities, you know, and they're watch my new show and where I'm uh, from my show. I'm like, go to fucking hell, man. I don't give a <laughs> shit about you and your TV show from your four million dollar house. Just no, and now act, the ones like who actually suffering. have it, like Ellen has it, and she's on the couch, like, oh, watch me have COVID. Um, okay, what happens when you don't die? Then somebody comes over and knocks you off because <laughs> you're uh, Dr. Drew, very the very famous celebrity doctor, Dr. Drew Pinsky, he's got COVID right now, and he reports on it daily. He reports how he's not dying and what a joke it is because he's on our side. But and uh, yeah, that, the one thing, thing he made a point that really blew me away that. While we're hearing is doom and gloom, we're not hearing, hey, this is what you need to do if you get it, uh, you know, or these are steps to take if you think you might have it. All we're hearing is you're all going to die, yep. which it, isn't that kind of almost a violation of what you're supposed to do as a doctor and as a politician? Yeah, well, all the ones, all the doctors that speak out with a rational mindset about it and say that it is, you know, in, uh, exaggerated information are mysteriously and magically discredited and you know now oh it doesn't matter how what their their career has been like or their practice has been like or how long they've been practicing now all of a sudden they're just they're they're decredited and I, they can't all be wrong though like i just don't understand like people i've been called a flat earther since i started talking speaking up against this yeah okay clearly by someone who hasn't listened to the show because the first year and a half of this goddamn podcast was making fun of flat earthers <laughs> um, I, and that like people won't people go because i've got a cartoon avatar on the fucking facebook people are like oh you're just hiding behind a cartoon go to my profile page it's got my name and phone number right mine does <laughs> I'm not, too i'm not hiding behind anything you can call me that's literally on my website ericgord.com my yeah. phone number is the first thing you see that's my personal number you can call me i'll tell you anything you want <laughs> i like that he has his promo voice 
Dude, if you want to have a real laugh, listen to some of the very first, uh, like the fir- parts of the first season, because Eric actually had a specific podcast voice. I very <laughs> much did. I it don't know what happened so to funny. it. I don't know when I got rid of it. It was we terrible. started swearing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so because we'd be talking before the show. We'd be like, no, blah, blah, blah. Fuck this, blah, blah, blah. We'd get on the show. Hi there. My name is Eric, and I'm here to tell you that you guys are having a great day today. <laughs> you know, the best part is I can't do that voice anymore. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I can't recreate it. Oh, I tried. So <laughs> that was like my my mother when I was growing up. She was like, you know, she she'd be just just bitching me up one side to the other. You, I can't wait. You know, my, my, you know, phone ring. Hello, Debbie Davis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That was> good. <laughs> you know, years ago, I uh, uh, drunkenly is about three o'clock in the morning. I found this ad in the newspaper saying, "Hey, call this number and leave a recorded message, and you can get picked to do voiceover stuff." So I'm like, "All right, fuck it." So I just did it. And it said, talk for one to 10 minutes, whatever you want. Just make sure your name and your phone number is in it. So I did it, forgot about it. I get a call about a week later. I said, we need you to come in the studio. You got a great voice. I'm like, all right. So I do. I show up at the studio in downtown Toronto. And they put me in the studio. And the guy hands me this script. He goes, okay, just you know, read this. So I'm reading the script word for word. And he's like, okay, what happened to the guy that left the message? We understand that you were, we're assuming you were drunk when you called him. Like, yeah, it's fucking hammered. I barely remember doing it. <laughs> He's like, well, we need to get him back like a little bit, oh, but just no like shit. no swearing. I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. So I just, I read the script a couple of times, kind of got it in my head and I just started changing it to my wording and I flew through the script and she goes, okay, can you do that again? But without swearing, I'm like, I didn't swear. And the, both of them went silent and she comes back on. She goes, no seriously like, can you stop joe can you redo that without swearing i'm like i never swore throughout that she's like you need to come in the studio and listen to what you just recorded and it was like every fifth fucking word <laughs> just fuck shit cock fuck fuck i had no idea and she's like you know you got a great voice for this but uh there's no medium that exists where you'll be able to get away with what you do i'm like well maybe someday there'll be something that i can you know do this on and lo and behold right. thank you eric <laughs> oh, hey, that's what i'm hey. here for and so far, so far, no government agency has gotten their hands on regulation of podcasting, and I hope they never fucking do. Well, yeah. they really can't, because if they do, we'll just move to something else. Right. And, and like, it, it, there's no radio it's, wave to control. There's it's no the only wave. free speech medium I think we have left. That is, it absolutely, aside from standing in your own backyard, right. which you almost can't really do anymore. Um, yeah, this is about it. And, and until they crap fully, out of them, you know it does. Yeah. <laughs> until they regulate the internet to the point where it's full regulation, which is yeah. what's being talked about. Um, as soon as yeah. once that happens, that's it. Podcast. Yeah. But it's not done. physically possible. That's the problem. It's it's too easy to circumvent their rules. They that's why they haven't yet. They would have if they could have. Hmm. I don't know because I don't I don't think enough people would be willing to circumvent around it. Like not enough people know how to and as soon as that information doesn't become easily available on Google, ninety percent of the population is not gonna know how to find it anyways. Yeah, that's true. So the bulk of the population, you remember you're not looking to fix everybody, just the bulk of the population. And I think they would be able to pull it off. Uh man, you, you're hitting the nail on the head there, you know, and that's <laughs> you you go go you go back to the 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 analogy, I think it was, I think it was Eric that said it, that was talking about, you know, you get enough people that, that believe that, you know, the grass on the side of the fence is red, you know, yeah. and well, what happens when the one person says, no, y'all, it's green, you know, you know, well, all of a sudden you're a conspiracy theorist and an idiot. Yeah, you know, that's but, exactly right. You know, if you can get the majority to uh, sway to, or to, to buy into what you're uh, selling them. It's all it takes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all it takes. It's just, it's majority. It's, it's, it's what really good salesmen do for a living. Mm-hmm. And that's, oh, that's exactly. exactly what it is. I mean, the government would be smart to hire me to manipulate the people to do this. Cause I, I got the, I got, I got the fucking way to do it. I just oh, hey, choose not I, to they pay me. If I, if I'm getting <laughs> Pfizer money tomorrow, this is the worst pandemic that's ever happened. I'm oh saying. my God. All the, of my family has the died. The tone on this show changes completely. If he's writing me, Pfizer writes me a check, we're all doomed. <laughs> Sell out. I, Absolutely. I, I don't call it selling out. Money. I call it buying in. I call it surviving. <laughs> See, I'm 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 so petty that uh that I will I will fight. 
<laughs> I'll cost my. Yeah, I was trying to think about that. I'll <laughs> I'll cost myself everything to fight something on nothing more than principle. <laughs> and 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 I've I've almost done that a n- number of times. I have an ex business partner that was stealing from me, and we had a bad legal arrangement, and I couldn't do anything about it. And da da da, and I was trying to buy him out of our business, and so on and so forth. And you know, my lawyers basically were like, "You're screwed." And they were yeah, like, "If you, they were like, if you want to go to court, it's going to cost you." They're like, "If we actually get to court, it's going to be at least a hundred thousand dollars." And I was like. I was like, well, um, what do I, how do I put my house up for collateral? And they were like, what? <laughs> and I was like, and they were like, you're not going to win. I'm like, I don't care as long as I fuck him. As long as, long <laughs> yeah, as I, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, as long as, and as, as long as, win, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and you know, so that's, that's, I don't know if that's like a, 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 a positive character trait or a flaw? <laughs> well, it's only a flaw to those that are against you, really. You know. Yeah. That's, that's Do you know how thing. much farther ahead I'd be in life if I wasn't like that? Like, I'm 42 years old. I live in a 200 square foot bachelor suite. It's, it's not because I've made good decisions. Um, hey, hey, I'm 46. And I just moved out of my mom's basement. So get the fuck. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm now sitting in my girlfriend's basement. <laughs> From one uh, sugar mama to another. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how it's done. That's the Canadian dream right there. Going, right there. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Man. You know what? I don't this is my hill. I this is my hill to die on. It really is. I'm I'm willing to go down with this ship. I am too, actually. I, I assume you mean the whole um let's use all use our brains rationally um, yeah. hill. Yeah. I, yeah. I if it would solve just so much. And that's my whole thing for this whole goddamn podcast has just been solve the problems and, and just think for yourself, just if something doesn't make sense, then mm-hmm. it's probably wrong. Like we're, we're really good at that. If yeah. something sounds really ridiculous, chances are it is. It's not that fucking difficult. You just ever use your up, noodle. Right. Have you guys picked up a box of disposable, uh, masks and looked at the warnings on them. Oh yeah, they're brilliant. <laughs> do, uh, do not wear if you have facial hair because it prevents a good seal. Does yep. not pre- does not protect against COVID nineteen or other bacteria or viruses. Uh, <laughs> do not touch. Replace every three to four hours. <laughs> and everything thought, that you're taught not to do. Well, right? the, I was thinking about this just a couple hours ago. I was out grocery shopping and I was watching everybody and everyone's dutifully wearing their masks. And then doing nothing else different at all. There, it's yeah. everything is just fine if you wear that mask. How does that make any sense? You're still touching your money. You're it, touching your it, eyes. You're touching no sense at all. Your, your and kids I, are I, picking I, up the packages and waving them around. And mommy, can I have this? And putting them back. And like nothing else has changed. So why would they work? But Even if they were effective, why would they be? If you're not doing anything to mitigate it, I, I just I, I think it makes to me. It makes sense that it makes the problem worse because you're still touching everything you would normally touch, and then everyone's running around finger fucking their mask all day long, and and you're putting whatever you're touching on your mask that now you're filtering air through. Exactly. And and I'm like, on top of the fact that you're not that you, you're you're not expel you're you're the things that your body's trying to get rid of are not getting it away from you is sitting on top of your mouth and your nose. Yep. And not to mention, and, I don't know what it's like in Nashville, but I see about 700 masks blowing down the street every day. So if they're oh, really that yeah. good, then you take them off and throw them in the middle of the fucking road. What good are they doing? Right? No. I mean, already, I mean, I saw the report was already released saying that they're expecting by spring of next year, there's going to be more masks in the fucking la- in the water than plastic. No, that's shit. good. That will go straight to my island, and I appreciate that. That's fine. <laughs> I just Man. needed something bouncy on my island. The uh the the giant Pacific garbage patch. Mm-hmm. Um, I do plan on taking it and declaring it sovereign territory, making it my homeland. Um, <laughs> and that'll be shortly after we, if well, that may be where I have to invade Venezuela from, because I don't see me <laughs> becoming prime minister anytime soon. <laughs> no one's gonna vote on an anti-COVID platform. Like I'm screwed for twenty for the next election, which is supposed to be this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
relax. <laughs> yeah, my plan, I don't know if you heard a couple of days ago, I, if elected prime minister, I will attack Venezuela. Um, 